Hello, everybody. How are we doing today on the last day of KubeCon? Good. <laughs> yeah, I feel about the same. Yeah, that was, that was about as half-hearted as I was expecting. Wonderful. Uh, thank you very much for joining me today. We're going to talk about uh, Agonis and Quilkin, uh, open source multiplayer game server orchestration, and service mesh on Kubernetes. I think I managed to fit all the buzzwords in, almost. Um, thank you very much for hanging out with me. A uh, little about me before we get started. Uh, my name is Mark Mandel, um, or Mark Mandel, depending on if I'm using my American or Australian accent. Uh, I tech lead developer relations for gaming on Google Cloud. Um, I'm founder, I, I'm one of the founders, I should say, and maintainers on both of the open source projects we're talking about today, which is Agones and Quilkin. Um, you can find all my details up here. Uh, before we get started, I would love to poll the room because this is going to be a distributed audience um, and possibly a little different from some of the normal people I give this to. Who here works in the video game industry? A small pocket of people over here. Okay, cool. That sounds fine. Who here went to uh, Joseph's talk earlier today about Agones and PlayStation? Okay, a lot of you got some giving. No, not everyone. Okay, that's perfect. Who here likes video games? Okay, now I understand what's going on. Awesome, awesome. No, that's great, that's great, that's great. Okay, cool. Um, we're going to be talking about some fun stuff today, and we're, we're, we've got half an hour, so some of it will be a little surface, but hopefully I'll be able to give you enough information to be able to go, oh, that's interesting, cool. So what do I want to talk about today? Um, I want to talk about fast-paced, real-time multiplayer games. Um, your Overwatches, your Fortnites, your Rocket Leagues, all those kind of fun stuff. Um, and I want to talk about uh, kind of two interesting kind of problems, both a little bit about how we host and scale them, but also how we look at securing and monitoring and doing interesting things that sort of service meshy kind of stuff with the UDP traffic that also happens um, with game server workloads. And we'll dig a little bit into both and we'll talk about how some of that stuff works as well before we go too deep. Um, I am gonna be doing a live demo because I like being afraid. Um, I will be using a open source uh, game called Synodic. Who here has heard of Synodic? I'm guessing like three people. Yep, okay, I counted that about right, perfect. Um, I'm gonna use an open source game called Synodic. It's like, if you ever remember like Circa 2000, like Unreal Tournament 2000, that kind of game, it's very much in that vein. Um, it's lots of fun. Okay, cool. So let's talk a little bit about real time Games, uh, I'm going to talk about one particular pattern, which we call dedicated game servers, and we're going to talk about some of the challenges they're in, um, and hopefully how the two projects we want to talk about today, Agones and Quilkin, help mitigate some of those challenges. Sweet. So, dedicated game server. Very quick primer. Um, think of it as you are playing a game with some people. Um, there is a full simulation of that game happening somewhere on a process running in the cloud. That is what we call a dedicated game server. Its job is that many people will connect to a dedicated game server and it has the state of what's happening inside the game and it communicates that state back down to the players. How dedicated game servers work, that's a whole talk on and itself, but that's the basic deal of how a dedicated game server works. Now, there are some challenges that come with dedicated game servers. I love dedicated game servers. I live with them all the time. Um, but they are kind of a very much in the very classic monolith sense, one big thing that encapsulates pretty much everything that happens inside that game. Um, you'll get everything from communication runtimes to simulation stuff to player authentication. It all sits inside this dedicated game server process. That means, yes, it is a single point of failure. Um, dedicated game servers usually handle a, a wide variety of in-memory state because they're running that whole simulation inside of them. So if they go down and all the players are connected to them, uh, have a bad experience if that game server goes down, which is not great. Um, this also means that, unfortunately, some people in the games scene aren't the nicest of people. Um, so that can mean they can be target for attack. Um, they can get DDoS. You can have all kinds of horrible stuff. People are like, oh, I'm losing. I don't want to. Um, it's fine. So there are interesting problems about how to orchestrate and scale them. We saw a talk earlier today speaking about Agones. I'm going to talk a little bit about Agones. I'm going to focus probably more on the Quilkin side today. But uh, for those who aren't familiar, uh, one of the projects I work on is a project called Agones. Um, and we'll, we'll show some examples of Agones. Agones is a open source project that teaches Kubernetes how to run game servers. Basically, the major thing that it does is that it's aware that, hey, if you have players playing on a game, don't shut it down. 
But if you don't have players playing on it, that's okay. We can shut it down. We can do stuff to it. Um, it introduces new concepts to Kubernetes like game server and fleets, um, and we'll have a look at some of that as well. It's, it's nice. We've been working on it probably for about five years now. We've had a wide variety of contributors, and thanks to the extensibility of Kubernetes with CRDs and, and operators and controllers, it's really nice the sort of stuff we can do inside there. But let's talk a little about some more challenges with dedicated game servers, because I want to talk a little bit about UDP game protocols. So uh, if you're not familiar, pretty much all your multiplayer games, generally speaking, as per everything, it depends, are UDP-based. Just take it for granted. That's why it is. It's a low latency thing. Uh, it works better. That's, again, a whole other talk. But the fun problem with dedicated game servers, or just gaming in general, around UDP game protocols is there's no standards. It's not a thing. Um, many use some kind of quote-unquote reliable UDP. Um, that doesn't mean like a re-implementation of TCP, but that's just a thing that, that happens. Uh, security and encryption can vary greatly. Um, we'll find there's a variety of sort of protocols, or not really protocols, but kind of libraries, like Unreal Engine has some stuff, Unity has some stuff. There's libraries like Netcode and KCP. Steam has game networking circuits. Uh, a lot of times you'll just end up in a proprietary solution because it's just better for your particular game to get better bandwidth or throughput or anything else. Um, and security also, like I said, really widely varies. Um, some people use DTLS, which is awesome. Some people take stuff from Libsodium. Um, I've seen projects where they're just like, that little bit of quick's really nice. I'll take that, thanks. Um, all the way down to, who's going to look at my traffic anyway? It doesn't matter. Um, so, like, uh, right? It's uh, very different from sort of probably what all of us, many of us who work in sort of the cloud native landscape, like there's no HTTP, there's no gRPC, like none of that exists. So the only guarantee that you can have in this environment is that you will get an array of bytes. Cool, awesome, thanks. Okay, so how do we start looking at problems like we're talking about, right, like communication and like, uh, you know, making making some kind of standards or like useful tools for this kind of stuff so it isn't just baked into the dedicated game server all the time. So I will definitely not be the first person to say this or point this out. I mean, we've all seen this happen before. Proxies, proxies are great. Um, and we see them all over the place from everything from sidecars to everything else. Um, in this environment, if we have a UDP proxy, just talking theoretically at this point, um, we start to get some, some nice things that happen here. Uh, we have redundant points of entry. Um, we can't really get away from the monolith per se as much, but at least we can hide the information about where those game servers are, because usually we're making a direct connection to an IP import. The game client gets that information, suddenly it's available to you. So anything we can do to hide that is nice. We can put some commodity stuff in it. Um, we'll look at that, some monitoring, some information. If we want to like, manipulate the, the UDP packets, we can do that too. Um, and it just generally makes it much harder to take down. We can distribute load if we're getting DDoS. Um, we can put smarts in it that otherwise we would have to have put inside our dedicated game server or run in a different process. So, yay, proxies. Definitely not a new concept to anyone here. So this is where we get into Quilkin. Um, over the last couple of years, um, been building this with Embark Studios, and we've had some other people float through, which has been lovely. Quilkin's a non-transparent UDP proxy specifically designed for use with dedicated game servers, i.e. there is no protocol. Um, we want to do stuff like access control, telemetry, data, metrics, and more. Um, I will say Quilkin, uh, it is not yet GA, I think is the best way to put it. It works. Um, we keep finding new stuff, so we break APIs on occasion. But uh, I've been working on it within Bark Studios, and I think it's safe to say that uh, they've been using it for their upcoming game because they've published stuff about that. Um, and we've had some other uptick in some other places as well. So I'm going to take you through sort of an example of, of these two working together um, and how we can both orchestrate game servers as well as do access control on them, um, ideally without actually touching our game server code or potentially even our game client. So a little bit about Quilkin. Quilkin really has two kind of concepts. Um, and you'll pick up that they're kind of the same concepts in Envoy. Thank you very much to that team for like opening up that proxy space. It's awesome. We lift a bunch of stuff from there. Um, we have endpoints, which are basically addresses. And we have filters, strangely enough. Uh, we have a variety of filters. Uh, it'll probably expand over time. We can do all kinds of stuff like do basic firewall rules. We can do compression. We can do routing to different endpoints. And we'll look at that a fair amount. We can add to packets. We can remove from packets, all that kind of fun stuff. 
But everything we do inside our filters really is about manipulating a array of bytes, because that's all we can guarantee we get. So if we have a look at a sample config here, this is just a static Quilkin config. Um, it's YAML, just like everything else we do with our time. Um, we can specify a set of filters. Here, we're concatenating bytes. Um, we'll look at this later. So if we wanted to add, say, a routing token to the end of our packets, um, which is exactly what we're doing here, we can do that through a concatenate bytes filter. We can say, hey, append that and add our routing token of a not very secure, please don't do this, 456 um, onto the end of every byte that comes through our system. And then we can pass it on to an endpoint. Nothing more, more fancy than that. So we can start doing these layers of filters to be able to manipulate our packets, um, even though they're fairly rudimentary. And we can start to do some relatively sophisticated things. OK, so that's the static configuration. But if you're saying, OK, cool, Mark, you've got game servers. That's dynamic. They're spinning up. They're going away. People are playing on them. You're scaling them up and down. How do we integrate this thing with like, something like Agones, which is like an orchestrator that, that manages game servers? Well, again, we, we talk a little bit about Envoy a little bit. Um, we implemented an XDS API. Uh, it's an XDS compliant API. Uh, if anyone's looking for a Rust implementation of XDS, we have one, I guess. Um, that might be useful for some people. Um, people here, anyone not familiar with XDS? Which is also totally fine. Some people. All right, cool, cool, cool. XDS is a relative standard API for configuring proxy servers. Um, it has cluster discoveries, listener discoveries, endpoint discoveries, and so you can write programmatic configuration of how you want however many um, proxies to be configured by their filters and where they're going and all that kind of stuff. But that's hard, and we don't want to do that. <laughs> Right? Uh, I know a bunch of hands went up. We're like, I don't know how XDS works. That seems hard. Um, so we looked at it and we were like, OK, we are often building stuff with the Gunners, which we'll actually look at in action in a bit. Um, and we want to run Quilkin with it. So yes, you can write your own programmatic configuration for how this stuff works. But um, if this is a common pattern and we both like these open source products and um, we want to use them together, we created uh, a set of providers inside Quilkin. So this now means that what you can also do is you can run Quilkin in proxy mode, but you can also run it in a manage mode, which says, hey, we're going to take all our dynamic information from either inside the Kubernetes cluster or what's happening inside um, Agones itself. So we can see things like, oh, there's a bunch of game servers running in your clusters. Those become endpoints. Uh, we'll have a config map for the system so we can see what's going on inside of it uh, for, for what filters we want. So we'll, we'll kind of have a look at that in action. Because that this this is actually one thing I think is actually quite exciting. Um, when you start building layers on top of these layers, and suddenly you have these systems that can talk to each other without having to know the complexities of things like XDS, although the capability of such is still there. And I think that's really, really cool. So let's have a look at how that works. All right. So if you have Quicken in management mode, drop a config map in your cluster. Um, Make sure it has Quilkin config map. And here we just have another set of filters that we want to do. Now, what we're actually going to do here is um, you saw before we sent in a routing token. Um, we're going to capture that routing token. It's the last three uh, bytes of the packet as it goes through. Again, we just get an array of bytes, nothing more than that. Uh, we're going to take that array of bytes. We're going to drop it off. Um, the capture filter will pass that information, that routing token, to the next filter. The token router will be like, oh, cool. I see you have a routing token. Um, and as part of the metadata for endpoints, you can attach tokens to them, strangely enough. It'll look through the endpoints and say, which one does it match to? If it matches that endpoint, that's where it's going to send that information to. And we'll see this in action in a sec. But this, this basically is all I need to configure the filters inside n number of proxies inside my cluster when I'm running in manage Agones mode. To create a fleet, now I know some of you weren't here for the talk previously about running Agones. Um, Agones uh, has game servers and it has fleets. Um, Kubernetes, you have pods, deployments, game servers, fleets, kind of the same. So fleets are just big groups of game servers. Usually you want to run a bunch of them because they, they take a while to spin up and you want to have warm sets so that you can basically grab one of them, which we'll talk about in a minute. It's a CRD. Basically what we're doing is we're saying, hey, how many of them do we want? And what does the container spec look like? It's a pod template spec. 
Um, we do a lot of port management and all kinds of other stuff. For today's talk, I'm gonna hand wave a lot of that away. But essentially, I'm gonna have a bunch of game servers running inside my system. They're gonna spin up using this fleet. We're gonna have three of them. They're gonna come up in what's called a ready state, which basically means they've loaded all their information and they can take players, and we're gonna have them available. But there is one other uh, concept that's gonna tie Quilkin and Agonis together in a really nice way. I was saying before that um, when Quilkin's running in Manager Agonis mode, uh, endpoints get picked up when game servers exist. They actually get picked up when game servers move into what we call an allocated mode. Um, Allocation is kind of a weird special thing that Agones does that kind of breaks the Kubernetes paradigm just a smidge. Um, we'll see it in action, but it's more of an imperative command that basically says, go find, me, uh, go find me a set of game servers that match those selectors we have up there, find the best one for me, uh, and mark it as allocated, move it to an allocated state. And that's the special state we were talking about before that says, I have players, don't mess with my game, because I need them to finish, otherwise they post mean things on Reddit. We don't like that, that's bad. Nobody likes that. Or they put things on Twitter or whatever people are using these days. Um, but the other thing that Kulkin does that's also quite nice is it looks for annotations on those game servers to know what those routing tokens are. And so it manages it for us. And one of the extra things we can do during allocation is attach an annotation to that game server that it's requesting. So we be like, oh cool, go get me that game server, sweet. I'm gonna grab it, I'm gonna mark it as allocated, and then I'm also gonna be like, these are the routing tokens that are available to me right now. I've you know, made some random number generation, hopefully something cryptographically secure, and I'm gonna hand those over. I could do that at allocation time, I can actually do that whenever, as long as I have access to the Kubernetes API. And then in theory, all that stuff should all roll through together, um, and we suddenly have access control, and we can be able to do things like if this player has the right token, they get access to their game server. If they don't, they get booted off. If they're doing something nefarious, we can stop their access pretty quickly across a whole range of proxies. So, should we try it in action? Cool, cool. This, this will be fun. I also realized that um, my cluster is still in the US, um, so the gameplay traffic might be a little slow, but it should be fine. All right, uh, let me go. I have no idea, is that big enough or do I need to make it bigger? Bigger, bigger, all right, let's do it. Also gonna do this over my shoulder, just for funsies. We good? Thumbs up, excellent, all right. This should work, where's my mouse? Perfect, 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 all right. Okay, I'm in the right spot, I am not. Yeah. Let me jump to Quilkin. That's exactly where I want to be. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so I have nothing in my hat. Um, I have a cluster, it has a gun, it's already installed on it. Um, I don't have any game servers. Um, game servers, there's nothing there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create that fleet of game servers we saw before. So this is gonna create that fleet we saw with three game servers. And the internet here is good, yes. If we have a quick look, we can see we have three of them. They're gonna take a little bit to spin up. They're about a gig in size each. This is the dedicated game server for that game we were talking about called Synodic. Um, you'll see here the state there, they each have an address and port. So if you ever play dedicated games, behind the scenes you usually get a direct address to connect to with a client. Have a quick look. Beautiful, they're all up and ready, fantastic, all right. So next thing we need to do is install uh, Quilkin in its uh, manage, the manage, uh, whatchamacallit, manage Agonis mode. Remind me what files I have in here. Ah, there it is. So that's gonna install um, that config map we saw before with all the filters in it and we're gonna see um, that the XDS control plane has spun up. So basically it's just a gRPC endpoint that each of the proxies is gonna connect to so that um, it knows what configuration information to get. Make sure that all works. Beautiful. Yay, up and running, fantastic, good start. Um, we'll also see there's a, there's a service for it too. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay, next we need some proxy pools to connect to and a UDP load balancer to throw in front of it. 
Um, those will be set up so that, um, sorry, proxy pools, yeah, there we go. Those will be set up so that they connect back to that um, manager kindness mode, um, and they'll be looking at the uh, configuration that we've set up in that config map and what game servers we have available. Now, all our game servers are ready, so we won't have any endpoints yet. We can actually inspect that. Uh, let's just have a quick look. Uh, pods, beautiful, that's all up and running. All right, let me show you what that looks like. Um, I'm actually, we have a, a config endpoint. So we're gonna have a quick look. Come here, pour it forward. Yeah, give me that. Beautiful, we'll just hide that for a sec. No, wrong one. Beautiful. So this now means that we can have a look at our config, and that's a lot, so let's scroll up a little bit. But we can see that the config on that proxy has those filters we were talking about before. There's our, our capture, there's our token router, so it's gonna grab that end of the packet and push it up. Uh, we don't, we can see we're connected to our Quicker management system, um, but we don't have any endpoints or anything like that set up. So let's get that going. Um, I'm also just gonna quickly check to see if we have an external IP. We do, okay, so that's where we're actually gonna end up connecting to uh, when we send our traffic for our game. So rather than connecting directly to the game server, we can actually send it through a load balancer, scatter the load across our proxies, um, and hopefully save ourselves some headaches. All right, let us allocate a game server. So I'm gonna allocate a game server again, basically being like the manual matchmaker that says, okay, I have a game server, let's get this up and running. So we'll create that chef. Usually this is something like a matchmaker does through an API or something like that, but we'll do it, uh, we'll do it on their behalf. Um, so I'm just gonna create this game server allocation. Um, it's gonna look through my game servers, it's gonna return me the state of which one it is that's allocated, so we can actually look at it. Um, this again means that we have players on it, it's, it's demarcated, it's special. Awesome, so it's allocated, we can see that there. So we could scale up and down, we could actually do rolling updates and all kinds of other fun stuff to the cluster without having to worry about whether or not something bad was gonna happen. Okay, cool. Um, oh no, now we have to actually connect to it and play a game. But before we do that, if you remember, we need to attach that routing token to the end of our packets before it goes through. Now, I have this open source game. I don't want to mess with the code on this open source game, that seems scary and I don't like that. So we can run an instance of the proxy to do this too, right? Um, in production, you may do this as part of your game client, um, just because things like consoles are really restrictive on like what you can do with them, but PC and other places, this would probably be perfectly fine. Um, what I need to do is get my external IP. Do, 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 do. That looks pretty good. This is gonna be great for my neck later. All right. So you'll, you'll uh, where are we, let's scroll down. You'll recognize this from before. This is literally the same concatenate byte uh, filtering that we were talking about previously. So rather than, let's put our load balancer IP in. Beautiful. Awesome. All right. So the theory being is what we can do is we can spin up an instance of our Quilkin locally. Cool. That's gonna accept our game client traffic, which is gonna stick our client token on it, our routing token on it. That's gonna send it to the load balancer. Then from the load balancer, it'll go to one of the proxies. The proxy's gonna be like, cool, I see you have one of the tokens. That's fantastic. Actually, let me, double, let me show you something real quick before I, before I do this. Um, we can actually look at this now. But yeah, it'll look at the token, pass the token, and be like, ah, oh, that's the endpoint I need to send to, and we'll be able to play a game. But if we have a look at our config real quick, we can see our endpoints, right? We allocated a game server. The management system sees that there's an address. There's our token on it, our 456, very secure stuff. Um, so in theory, this should all work now. Okay, moment of truth. Let's run our proxy. That's all up and running. Let's pop over here. And let's run Synodic. This will be fun. All right. So rather than connecting to a remote address, I am 127.0.0.1. I'm going to connect to 7000, which is local. And everything is working. Black screen, for whatever reason, this game is actually a good thing. Don't tell me why. Um, 
but yes, now this is connecting to my Agones cluster that is running over in, I think it's US West actually. Um, but it's running through my local proxy and I got dead already. Wow, that was, that was really fast. Uh, that was on purpose uh, for sure. Um, it's because I'm playing on a trackpad. It's not, not how bad I am at video games. Um, but it's, yeah, it's running the information through the proxy that is local through the UDP load balancer um, and, then, and then into the game server. Um, people will always ask, Mark, what's the overhead for this? Um, so usually we see about a P99, about half a millisecond through the proxy. Um, that's sort of worst case scenario, which is reasonable and fine. It's not too bad. Um, but it does mean, yeah, now we can nice, do nice things like either manipulate our traffic, um, we can do this access control like we were talking about before, um, we can either remove or add stuff if we want to remove that annotation at runtime from that game server because I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing inside the game, we're able to do that. Um, and you can start building out architectures of proxies as well. But there is actually something else that I want to show you that's also cool. Again, we're talking about breaking apart the monolith. It's very much that traditional monolith to microservices kind of conversation. Um, I, will, I, will, I will exit this, that is fine. But if I come over here and we refresh this page, because it should be fine. Um, yeah, suddenly we can do stuff like have generic metrics for our UDP communication that we wouldn't otherwise have necessarily been as easy to get to uh, running this out of a game server. Um, I don't know if you know this, but there's not really a Prometheus exporter for like Unity or Unreal. Um, it would be really nice if there was, if, actually I should talk to those people, that'd be really handy. If any of you are here, can you write one of those? Thank you. Um, but we can start seeing things like network traffic rates and, and the information, packet drops, errors, how many sessions we have, the length. Again, all that nice stuff that you get from open source standards where you're like, oh, look, I'm running basically a service mesh where I can start to start pull this kind of information out. We have lots of other cool stuff we're looking at doing. Um, one of the things I'm actively looking at right now is, uh, being able to like talk to external systems, like if you're rate limiting something and you've got someone who's sending way too many packets, you know, like they shouldn't be doing that. We should tell like a firewall to stop them from doing that or something like that. We can do all kinds of interesting stuff there. But again, we start to break apart the monolith, which I think is really exciting um, and is, is particular to this particular use case, but we can kind of start to set some standards as well. Everything we're building here as well is very like simple in its, oh, you don't need to see that. Um, very simple in sort of its usage. If you do need to like build it into your game client, which in some cases you will, again, what we're doing here, it's adding a, a routing token to the end of a packet. Um, we're trying to be as simple and composable as possible. We also have some Unreal um, clients in there as well, if you want to do that. For those of us who work in video games, I know there's a small pocket over there. I just want to mention that. All right, cool. Let's wrap it up. So we saw a nice demo. That actually meant that, um, we can implement uh, UDP proxies, um, and definitely I want to say, like, I'm, I'm not, definitely not the first to do this. There's, there's a bunch of prior art here that we've definitely leveraged uh, across both wider tech and the gaming industry. But suddenly, yeah, we can start to talk about open source standard tooling for this kind of work. Um, we can make it so that game servers are harder to take down. We can have more redundancy. Um, we can kind of give some of the would have traditionally been probably some of the more proprietary proxying solution for games um, out to the wider video game industry, which makes me happy. Um, and it does also mean that in a space where there are no standards, when you start building proxies, as we've seen, like with everything else that we've seen through Envoy and like through Traffic and through all the variety of proxies and sidecars we've seen in the, in the cloud native space, it, when you make it easy to do, I don't want to say the right thing, but better things, um, then you can start to set those standards and that, that also really excites me. So yeah, this is, this is literally what we, what we ended up with, uh, with the demo that I showed. Um, this isn't the only way you could configure this. You could do all kinds of other fun stuff. You could be like, here, I'm gonna give the game client three proxies out of the set of 20 that I have. Um, maybe you'll get some of them, maybe you'll get all of them. Maybe I'll do fun things like honeypots and proxies when I know some people are not very nice people and be like, I'm just gonna send all the bad traffic over here because I know it's getting bad traffic. You can start doing all kinds of other interesting things. But yeah, we have the Agonis XDS provider. It talks to the dedicated game server, sees what's going on there and uh, can manipulate all the rest of the proxies. Um, so yeah. So finally to wrap up, um, I will also mention my business cards are down here in the front. So if you think, oh, maybe in the future, I will have a question for Mark. My contact details are there. But we have active communities across both projects. Um, if you're interested in game server, game server orchestration or just in general 
um, operators and CRDs and extending Kubernetes in weird and wonderful ways. Uh, Agones.dev, we have lots and lots of contributors there. It's, uh, we have a Slack that's available as well. Quilkin um, is been running for a couple of years, but it's still, I would say, relatively new, but, but it's been growing quite nicely over the last, last period. Um, you find a Discord there. You can see the age of each project by which chat platform everyone uses. Um, we would definitely love uh, to have you contribute. I do want to give some credits as well to the external community I work with on Quilkin, especially those from Embark, uh, Luna Duclos, um, who I started the project with, uh, Afenia Uber, who did a lot of the initial work, and uh, Aaron Power, who has been doing a lot of the work on Quilkin in the last little while and is absolutely killing it. Okay. Um, finally, um, I know it's almost lunchtime and you all want to run, but if you do have questions, uh, please walk up to the microphones and ask them. Otherwise, thank you very much for your time. I know it's precious and really appreciate you spending your KubeCon with me. I hope you learned something interesting.